Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-1472. Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures A 3 meter tall chain link privacy fence is to be constructed around the property boundary of SCP-1472. Construction signage is to be placed on all sides of the perimeter fence as to deter public suspicion. Mobile Task Force IOTA-6, also known as Hard Knocks, are tasked with protecting the site from trespassers and are to be stationed within a four-block quadrant around SCP-1472 at all times, dressed in applicable urban attire. Any civilians that breach the fence are to be apprehended and be administered Class A amnestics before being released. Any testing involving D-Class resources must have Level 3 approval. All D-Class personnel involved with testing are to be interrogated via polygraph afterwards. Description SCP-1472 is a brightly painted, single-story brick building located in East St. Louis, Illinois, USA, on the corner of Street and Avenue. The exterior condition of the building is poor, but remains stable. City records indicate that the building was erected in 1978 by the now defunct Corporation. SCP-1472 has been condemned since 2001 when SCP-1472's anomalous activity began. SCP-1472 has only one accessible entrance on the west side of the building. When entered during its inactive state, SCP-1472 appears completely empty. SCP-1472 only becomes active every Saturday at 2 a.m. During this active state, an overweight human male, SCP-1472-1, will exit from SCP-1472 and display signage out in front of the entrance. One display is set directly on the asphalt in front of the entrance which lists a schedule of events. The other larger display is placed directly on the side of the building and lit with decorative neon lighting. Notes: SCP-1472 signage text on the 1st of December 2013. Exotic girls or equivalent. During the active period, SCP-1472-1 will insist that all persons seeking admittance pay a cover charge of dollars and not engage in photography or video recording once inside. Shows will differ nightly, however, the performances always range from 2 a.m. to 3.30 a.m. During the duration of the performances, the entrance or exit will remain locked until the last show ends. Injuries and fatalities have occurred depending on the content of the show. Participants have been observed to sustain psychological trauma. Test Log 1472-0112134 Preamble Three D-Class subjects were approved for testing on the 1st of December 2013. D-Class test subjects were transported to the site and told to wait in front of the entrance of SCP-1472. D-Class test subjects were told that they must take notes and report everything that they see inside. Below was a schedule of events as posted outside of SCP-1472 before testing. Schedule of Shows 2 to 2.10 Admittance 2.10 to 2.15 The Kunbish Sisters 215 to 220 Helen Keller 220 to 230 The Fantastic Zippy and Trainer 230 to 235 Teeth and Claw Marks 235 to 240 Intermission 240 to 241 Erotic Performance.exe 241 to 245 the Council of Libidinous Elders 245 to 320 Serial number 223244-09-P 320 to 330 Indecipherable Cuneiform Script D-Class ID D-3432, D-6744, and D-9908 150 AM D-Class test subjects were dropped off by transport and were told to approach SCP-1472's entrance. 
Each were given $100 in $5 bills. D-Class test subjects are also encouraged to spend their money once inside. 1.55 AM SCP-1472-1 emerged from the entrance with signage. SCP-1472-1 began to set up around the entrance. D-Class test subjects and SCP-1472-1 did not interact with each other. 2 AM SCP-1472-1 allowed admittance into SCP-1472. SCP-1472-1 asked from each D-Class test subject dollars as a cover charge. D-Class test subjects obliged and paid said cover charge in exchange for admission into SCP-1472. 2.03 AM All D-Class subjects were now inside SCP-1472. D-Class test subjects reported that the interior conditions were excellent. The interior was outfitted with shag carpeting, mirrored walls, and a single disco ball which hung from the ceiling, a thick fabric curtain that covered most of the stage, and a single brass pole which extended from the ceiling down into the middle of the room. Comfortable seating arrangements were made available for a maximum occupancy of 30. 2.10 AM to 2.15 AM The Kunbish Sisters the curtain opened to reveal two naked women sitting on a wooden log. The women appeared to be twins of Asian descent. Both women then performed traditional Tuvan throat singing while massaging each other for the duration of the show. D-3432 and D-9908 deposited $10 on stage which prompted the women to pause and begin a faster song. The curtain then closed at the end of the show. 2.15 AM to 2.20 AM Helen Keller. The curtain opened to reveal a woman with the same physical appearance as Helen Keller in her mid-twenties. The woman was dressed in typical Las Vegas showgirl attire and began to perform a dance routine on stage while undressing at the same time. D-3432, D-6744, and D-9908 each deposited $10 on stage. This prompted the woman to immediately interrupt her routine and recite poetry for a few seconds. D-6744 deposited another $5 on stage with the same results. The curtain then closed at the end of the show. 2.20 AM to 2.30 AM The Fantastic Zippy and Trainer The curtain opened to reveal an orangutan sitting on a metal stool next to a headless woman with advanced necrotizing fasciitis. Despite being headless, the woman was able to function normally. The orangutan then began to give vocal commands directed at the woman to which she responded by performing a pole dancing routine. D-3432 deposited $5 on the floor next to the woman. The woman responded by pushing the $5 bill directly into her exposed trachea. The orangutan then ordered the woman back to the stage. The curtain then closed at the end of the show. 2.30 AM to 2.35 AM Teeth and Claw Marks The curtain opened to reveal four predatory bipedal reptiles. Based on the D-Class test subject's descriptions, the reptiles may have belonged to the genus Velociraptor. Each were dressed in a Japanese made cosplay costume tailored to fit them. The reptiles began to approach D-9908 off stage in an extremely aggressive manner. D-9908 relinquished all of his money which seemed to appease the reptiles as they collected the money and shifted attention towards D-3432. D-3432 also relinquished all of his money with the same results. Afterwards, all four reptiles were ordered back on stage by SCP-1472-1 and the curtain then closed. D-6744 divided the remainder of his money with the other D-Class test subjects. 2.35 AM to 2.40 AM Intermission No events were reported during this time. 2.40 AM to 2.41 AM Eroticperformance.exe The curtain opened to reveal a Gateway 2000 computer and a monitor running a Finestra 98 operating system. The display booted up and opened a program on its desktop. 
The computer then began to rapidly recite a multitude of differential equations as well as their respective 3D graphical representations for 20 seconds. At the end of the program, the monitor displayed the word insert in the form of a screensaver. D6744 and D3432 both inserted $5 into its floppy drive. The curtain then closed at the end of the show. 2.41 AM to 2.45 AM The Council of Libidinous Elders The curtain opened to reveal 16 entities levitating above the stage. Each entity appeared as a translucent gelatinous mass filled with membranous tissues. The entities then began to project transmissions via telepathy into the minds of the D-Class test subjects. D-Class test subjects reported migraines, acute tinnitus, and projected thoughts of intense physical sensation. No money was deposited on the stage. The curtain then closed at the end of the show. 2.45 AM to 3.20 AM Serial number 22324409P the curtain opened to reveal a pair of mechanical humanoid legs running in place. The apparatus was being powered by an internal combustion generator situated on the left side of the stage. SCP-1472-1 was seen pouring a substance into the generator by funnel. Based on the D-Class test subject's descriptions of appearance and odor, this substance is believed to possibly be raw ambergris. After 15 minutes, D-9908 deposited $5 on stage. The apparatus then began to perform a traditional Irish step dancing routine. SCP-1472-1 then brought out a plastic tray filled with an unknown species of beetle and placed the apparatus atop them. The apparatus continued to dance for the duration of the show while SCP-1472-1 periodically replaced the trays with refilled ones. The aroma produced by the performance was reported to be overly pungent to the point of nausea. The curtain then closed at the end of the show. 3.20 AM to 3.30 AM Indecipherable Cuneiform Script The curtain opened to reveal SCP-1093 wearing a small mawashi and holding an ornate stone blade. After a minute, SCP-1093 lunged at D-3432. After a brief altercation, SCP-1093 was able to render D-3432 unconscious and move his body towards the stage. Based on reports by the D-Class test subjects, SCP-1093 then began to perform a ritual human sacrifice. D-6744 attempted to rescue D-3432 but was halted by SCP-1472-1 and was warned that he was not allowed to touch the dancers. SCP-1093 then proceeded to remove all major organs from D-3432 in order of size before kicking them off stage. This lasted for the remainder of the show. Note: the Foundation records confirm that SCP-1093 was secured in its containment unit during this time period, which suggests that this was a physically identical yet extremely violent instance of SCP-1093. It is also believed that during their performance, SCP-1093 was only producing roughly 4% of its normal radioactive emissions since D-6744 and D-9908 survived with moderate radiation poisoning after the show ended. 3.32 AM SCP-1472-1 was observed standing outside, smoking a large cigar, as the surviving D-Class subjects staggered out of SCP-1472. D-6744 and D-1908 were apprehended and taken to the infirmary. SCP-1472-1 was then observed removing the signs and retreating back to SCP-1472. D-3432's remains were never recovered. Okay. I think that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to researcher Brandon Connell, Burlington the Cat, Slump God, Justin Day, Pierce M. Hamlin, White Crew, 
Beware 600, Bryson Bailey, My Archive Curator Nick, Tyver Ball, Cody Tench, Cheese Whip, The Android, The Administrator, Quartz 563, and Tree Hero. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Vulgan. Thank you.